uh, yeah, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays But Bad It Doesn't. Today I was coming to you from Tasmania. It's a little, little ways outside of Hobart. You can see my compadre over there crouching around, fiddly fucking around in the sand. We're here to show you uh, two species of orchid. Okay, really bizarre. Subfamily orchidoidae, uh, you know, as opposed to epidendroidae. I always got to mention that. A lot of the Australian orchids are orchidoidae subfamily, terrestrial orchids. Uh, known as Kaliana. Kaliana is the genus. We got both Kaliana major and Kaliana minor, both species here. Known as, no colloquially, is the flying duck orchids. Really bizarre fucking orchids here. So we're going to check them out. So these, okay, so here, this is Kaliana major right here, okay? Really weird, okay? A lot of the, lot of these uh, Aussie orchids, these terrestrial orchids, are really bizarre. And they're, they're, they got a hustle, man. They're duping these insects, okay? They're fiddly fucking around, duping these insects. All right, using a, something known as pseudocopulation uh, to get these these dumb male insects to come try and bang them and then transport their pollinia. Okay, first notable thing about this orchid is it's non-resupinate, meaning the labellum is up top. That's what looks like the duck bill. And the pollinia and the column uh, are all on the bottom, all right, which is extremely bizarre, okay, because most orchids are resupinate, meaning they're, they're flipped over 180, okay, meaning the, the labellum... Uh, is on the bottom and uh, 180 degrees from, from the way the flower emerges off the axis, uh, you know, so the, the labellum's on the bottom and the column is up, up top, right? Not so with these. These are non-resupinate, just like the genus Prasophyllum, uh, which is another cool uh, genus of Aussie orchid. So you got the labellum up top, you got the column and the plenty on the bottom. So this is the labellum up top. The duck bill is that labellum. And interesting enough about this, when it's touched, it actually triggers that labellum to slam down into that column, which is the lower part. Remember, this is a non-resupinate orchid, and slams the insect that's trying to mate with it. The labellum slams it into that cup-like column down there at the bottom, forcing it to pick up the uh, pollinia, or pollinium, if it's just a single one, and uh, fly off with it, and then try to mate with another orchid and repeat the process. Okay, let's see if we could trigger this one. There you go. See that? Boom! How's it do that? All right, so this is a really interesting pollination mechanism, and it seems to work. The, the, the pros of it are you don't have to actually secrete any nectar. You don't have to produce all those uh, sugars that uh, attract insects. But, you know, oddly enough, this thing is going to all the trouble to produce the pheromones that actually help attract the insect, which is extremely bizarre. And a number of orchids, a number of these terrestrial Aussie orchids actually do that. They secrete chemical pheromones they secrete chemicals which actually help attract the insect and make make it think that it's uh you know going for a female it's really bizarre it's deceptive pollination deceptive pollination via pseudo copulation all right a non-eloquent way to say that is it's basically trying to get the soft fly which is the main pollinator to try and bang it and then uh you know because males are really easy to dupe all right always thinking with their dongs all right gay straight always thinking with their dongs doesn't matter so it's, it's duping the male soft light into trying to mate with it and then, you know, making it perform a service, you know? Pretty pretty hilarious and pretty cool. At the time these are flowering, the, the leaf is already withered too. Look at that. So you got a tuber in the ground too, probably a rich uh, mycorrhizal tie-in somewhere down there too. You got a tuber in the ground and uh, just that one single leaf. Look at that. I wonder how long it takes them to flower, how many years it takes them to store up enough juice to, you know, finally send out a flower. God damn. It, you smart ass. Don't think I know what a duck looks like, huh? Kaliana, I'll show you a goddamn Kaliana. Huh? You got that labellum up top, all right? You non resupinate. First off, this was first making you a freaky, a freaky weirdo. And then you got this labellum that looks like a fucking duck. Think I don't know what a duck looks like? Who are you trying to fool, huh? You making some sort of remark about me? You body shaming me, huh? Look at it, you got your, it's a, it's a, it's a non-resupinate organ. You got a labellum on top, the dorsal sepal on the bottom, the pollinia are on the bottom right there. He's trying to fool some fucking insect into trying to mate with them. Is that what he's doing? You're secreting the pheromones too? Huh, you filthy fuck? And then here's the other species in the genus, Caliana minor. You can see these have been triggered already. That labellum is already secured inside that perianth. Much smaller species, much more diminutive as you can see. Appears to have a, uh, get some, you get uh, some cali on that, on that uh, stud, on that little uh, labellum. You get some studs on that, look at that. Looks like a little bullhorn. 
All right, what if this is uh, attracting a different species of insect? All right, look at that. You barely notice it coming up on the sands. And you go down there where there's no more sands, they taper off. They need the sands. They're adapted to uh, the fast-draining, relatively nutrient-poor sands. Anyway, there you go. Kellyanna minor. All right, the duck orchids. Did you know that? Did you know orchids will dupe insects into uh, trying to bang them in order to achieve pollination? Pretty ingenious. Of course, evolution doesn't work like that. It's not directed by the plant or the environment. Well, I guess it's kind of directed by the environment, but uh, either way, it works, you know? Find what works and just uh, excel at it. Look at that guy. Holy hell. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of the afternoon. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Oh, and then, of course, we got a member of Tribe Nephalia, which is, uh, I believe, the dominant uh, clade of the sunflower family, Astraceae, that you find down here in Australia. You could see those phyleries, the paper daisies, they call them. See how the phyleries are kind of papery? No ligules on the mature flowers, but uh, instead serving as an attractant, which is what the ligules, what the rays do on most caps that have them, is uh, the phyleries kind of take that role. So the phyleries become more showy, those papery bracts. Still just got a discoid flower, but you got these papery bracts acting as an attractant to get the pollinators in there, flag them down, get them to notice. How about that? Peridium esculentum everywhere. These little stiff little ferns get slapped around with that. You like that? You, how do you like that, huh? Oh, look at that. I like that. That's a nice color. Ooh. And because we are on the nutrient poor sand, we have a species of climbing sundew. You can see it, a carnivorous plant supplementing its nitrogen, which it's surely not getting from this nutrient poor, fast draining sand, supplementing its nitrogen with insects. And not just using those uh, glandular trichomes. Those leaves with such glandular trichomes on it to trap insects. Also using it, also using them to climb onto other plants and uh, help uh, help get itself up. You know, because those, those that filamentous stem, look how thin that is. It uh, doesn't provide the most uh, structural support, como se dice. Look, it already flowered already. All right, Australia is rich in Drosera diversity, and Tasmania, of course, is no different. But this thing's blowing my mind. God, the Australian peas are so cool. Especially the merbellioids, which so many of them are. Okay, they don't have that isoflavone chemistry that so many uh, members of Faboidae subfamily, of the pea family Fabaceae have. They have uh, single-seeded fruits, and they have very toxic secondary chemistry. And this is probably no exception. This is a species in the genus Gomphalobium. Looks like Gomphalobium hugelii. Uh, and uh, you can see it's got black calices, <laughs> first off, which is, first noticeable thing about this is those black calices, all right? They stand out like how you don't often see the color black in many plants, at least not uh, as a predominant feature of the sepals. There you go. And uh, also of the keel. Remember, uh, subfamily Faboidea has banner in the back, the wings, those two yellow wings, and then the keel uh, petals. So the keel here is black, all right? The calyx and the keel are black. Pull that uh, keel down. You got all those stamens inside. This thing's a fucking banger, man. Look at that. God damn it. Growing on the sand, all right? Fixing nitrogen, fixing atmospheric nitrogen with the help of that rhizobium bacteria and just coming up on the sand. Look at that. Look at those. What the shit? Look at those old calyxes. Is that something else or is that? No, that's the pee. What the shit? God damn, so what, did these just abort then? Where's the ovary? It should be an ovary. Maybe, oh, I guess it was already, the old fruit was already picked off. Those are last year's flowers. Little pea pod. Look at that. Those calyxes are showy as hell. God damn, I love that. Black flowers. All right, ever see salvia discolor from Peru? Almost black, kind of black flowers. Close enough to it. Anyway, there you go. Gomphalobium. Gamph. Touch my gomphalobium. Yeah, I just stepped off the path into this uh, eucalypt woodland for a minute. Just stepping into the bushes to look at uh, this cool species of fungus coming up. Cool uh, Basidiomycete. Just, I just seen the top poking up, looking like, uh, you know, some of those, uh, that uh, sweet bread you get at the Mexican bakeries. Super sandy. Got a rubbery texture. Didn't smell too bad. Either. Nice orange color. Put that guy back. Got another one popping up. Where'd it go? <clears throat> oh, right over there. Look at that. I wonder if that's the same species or not. Looks like it. Yeah, look at it. Look at it. Little toadstool. Ah. 
beautiful. Wonder if I should maybe I should go help him disperse his spores, you know? Cause I maybe I maybe I ruined it. Did I ruin it for him? Look at these fucking cockatoos and a magpies and everyone just making whole shit tons of noise. This guy, Elio Carpaci is the family and his Tetratheca is the genus. And they can be uh, little l tiny little herbs or uh, small shrubs. Look, they got porosidal anthers too. So you got eight anthers and then a, maybe there's ten. I can't see. I have to go look at the macro shot I just took. Four petals, eight anthers, and a little central ovary. Glandular as hell. And we got we got a she oak. What a weird common name. A she oak. She hulk. Anyway, this is uh in the genus Allocasserina, order of Fogales, order of oaks. So the, the name's not a total misnomer. All right, Allocasserina just have photosynthetic stems. Adaptation to the dry environment. They got vestigial leaves at the nodes right there. You can barely see them. And plants are dioecious. This is a male. Females have uh, what look like little pine cones, little woody pine cones. It's actually a woody infructescence. And uh, the it's got these slits in it that look like little mouths. They open and all these tiny winged seeds come out. Really cool genus though. Some of them are very large trees. Some of them get uh, planted in tropical areas. There's a bunch that are somewhat invasive in Florida and Texas. They look like pines. Uh, that species does, but uh, obviously they're not. And they got the nitrogen-fixing bacteria in the roots.